Wow. <laughs> Eminem, man, once again, has deceived you all. He's deceived the masses. He have you all, all believing that he's the one being bullied and he's just defending himself. He loves to play victim. You know, and they're re it's it's crazy to me because <laughs> Royce, who I admire now for changing his life, is giving up drinking. He made one of the most amazing albums of last year, The Book of Ryan. That and Nipsey Hustle Victory Lap. I listened to both of those over and over again and uh, the more it's being said, the more I see it clearly. Eminem sent Royce to like get things started. See what Eminem wanted to do was like, okay, Shady Records is back. We're back making money. You know, my first album was normally when an Eminem album drops, everybody jump like, whoa, it's Eminem. And everybody runs out and starts going to check out Eminem's album. But even Eminem's fan base is not dealing with Eminem no more. Because, one, we ain't jumping for Eminem. You know, we ain't vibing with him like that. So, if we not doing that, and most of the people that was listening to Eminem, they're now grown with kids. You feel me? They're in their 30s, finna be 40 now. They married with kids and, you know, their kids is growing up, you know, you know, don't really deal with Eminem. Eminem don't make the music now that their kids are listening to. You know, all the Eminem fans and stuff, they in their late 30s and 40s. You know, 8 Mile was a long time ago. <laughs> you better lose yourself in the music. And that was like his fourth album at that time like that soundtrack when that came out that was many moons ago i mean i mean 50 cent album is over 10 years old so eminem was three albums in during that time like his success came in the late 90s so we're talking 20 years ago And now, here he is on stage, dissing Lord Jamal. That just shows you where his plane, plane is now. I'm like, once he mentioned DJ Academics on a, on, on a record, do you know Eminem would have never mentioned DJ Academics? And no, this is not a DJ Academic diss video. I'm just saying. You mentioned a blogger on YouTube. You know, and once you've done that, you have now crossed over to a plethora of problems. You completely have. You've screwed up. Because now it's like, man, you used to be the man in hip hop. Now you got to mention DJ Academic's name? Who don't really back any artist you deal with, really. He's normally doing with all the mumble rap and auto tune rappers. And now you're making an album really dissing them. They have to reference them. J. Cole basically did that with KOD. <laughs> you're following his blueprint. Because your first, like, Record didn't make your pop record. When you went alternative rap, you know, that wasn't popping for you no more. And you come out here with Adele. And it's like, uh, who's he want to buy this record? Because you just did a freestyle on BET with like 50... No, 60 brothers around you and you sitting there the only white guy with a hoodie. Just rambling words. 
And I'm like, yeah, he's a tough guy. Got a bunch of black people around him. Then, your album come out, and you're talking about revival. And it's like, Eminem's going to church. I'm like, he is? <laughs> Never heard him preach about God before, but okay, yeah. And you got Ed Sheeran and all these people that don't look like the black brothers in the hoodies that you had on the BET cipher. <laughs> Where are they at? Where are they wrecking? So, anyhow, Lord Jamal gave his opinion, and he's basically done with it. Everyone else keep rehashing it. And then the man hasn't said anything for I don't know how long. And Royce the Five Nine just goes on this rant out of the blue talking about it. When someone else was mentioning Lord Jam what Lord Jamal had said back in the past. And he's, man, I'm sick of this dude, Lord Jamal. I'm like, why is he bringing this up now? Did Lord Jamal say something else? And he didn't. So he made a video, and he started talking about Royce the Five Nine. Like, look, Royce, uh, you're kind of making yourself look bad here. <laughs> Sticking up with a white guy. <laughs> like, he's not a grown man himself and can't talk for himself. You know, this had nothing to do with you. He was talking about him. I know he's your boss, but your boss can defend himself. He don't need anybody to cat for him. Now, I understand that Lord Jamal said this was that and that was it. You know, like, he gave his opinion, did his video, that was that. He hasn't mentioned anything on Eminem. Eminem goes out, put a tweet. People act like this is what they really want until they get it. And I say, okay, album's coming soon. <laughs> we just know the routine. We know, we, we know the routine. Whenever this start happening, an album is coming. So Revival flopped. And nobody liked it. Eminem was like, y'all not listening to the lyrics. We like, we listened to the song. It sucked. <laughs> and now he comes out with an album. I'm going to make an album out. That's going to be really big to me, man. And I'm going to make real songs. And then I'm going to diss everybody for not liking Revival. That ought to make me sell. And I'm going to just diss everybody. And just name drop people. And they'd be like, Eminem's back. And it was like, man, this is the Eminem album he should have came out with. Eminem came out with the album he knew he should have came out with. That should have been his revival. I'm like, well, that's Eminem. But see, he played the safe card. He came out with the Ed Sharing, Adele. All right, you tried to you tried to go for the pop. You wanted to pop. popcorn <laughs> and then nobody gravitated to the songs he had Beyonce on there you had what well, I think he had Adele at first and ended up doing Adele couldn't make it or something then he got Beyonce so that's what happened walk on water I love that record that's a beautiful record it's a so listen to it but ain't nobody even to gravitate to that walk on water Ed Sharon song which wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It just when this is not your audience, dude. <laughs> I'm just sorry. People who listen to Ed Sharing don't really deal with Eminem. People that listen to Beyonce don't deal with Eminem. These are just reality certainties here that we're we're dealing with. The people of your fan base don't normally deal with the people that are on your records and their fan base don't deal with you that's why your record sales were suffering now this album they overinflated it to make it what it was and made it look like it was killing just like they did your disc record uh, it's the largest on youtube it cracked every day i'm like why y'all wasting that money to try to promote that you know nobody really cared <laughs> 
Nobody was going to play Eminem diss record no more after that. Nobody's listening to Kill Shot like that. They just wanted Kill Shot to be that record. That it wasn't. <laughs> it was a good diss. Huh? You know, I was glad he came back as Eminem and tried and showed him a level as an MC. But he did make a great song. You know, so it wasn't a song you could just play and play that back. Run that back. Yeah, you know, it wasn't like, come on. You serious? <laughs> <laughs> you play MGK song, you play that. Right, one's a banger. Banger with a lot more bite. Now, he go out on stage, right, overseas, and does this skit with Mr. Porter. He's Mr. Porter, I had a dream. I had a nightmare that I was a whack MC. And when I woke up, you know how I was? I was Lord Jamar. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just trying to throw the bait in. It's like, dude, drop the album already, okay? Go through your progression. Now, for you little kids out there who don't really know, I'm going to inform you of something. Lord Jamal, he can rap. <laughs> I'm serious. Lord Jamal can rap. And I don't know if that's the kind of battle Eminem want to really get into. Because he doesn't care about your fan base. He cares about the core cool audience and the people that vibe with him, like Tlaib and all those people. They, they gravitate with him, with hip-hop. That's like hip-hop royalty almost. You don't want to you don't want to uh, mess with him when it comes to rhymes. He has substance and he's rapped about things. So your Abu Dhabi show that you did overseas you know and trying to say Puba was better and everything else. I mean you could you can say all you want, but the man did. The man was on Showbiz, the Dead Prayers assassination. Are you kidding? You guys gotta understand. Like he's he's been there. And you want to mess with a guy like that. All right. I'm trying to think. Oh, Sadat X was my guy. But, you know, Lord Jamal did have some rhymes, but. I ain't gonna say he was the illest one in the clique, but she <laughs> I knew this girl named Tropicana. She's always juicing, producing cash from a sexual task. <laughs> she loves men to trick like Halloween and treat. <laughs> you ain't paid, then your grade is incomplete. You got the flash dollars to prove her. But when you do, she sucks it up like a hoover. <laughs> He's like taking all your papes like an inhalation of vapes. Her nasal passage is filled with money. It's massive. <laughs> what I am, what I am, what I am. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Man, y'all y'all know what y'all. That's what I'm saying. You don't remember any of this. You guys are young. You don't remember anything about any of it. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know if this is something Eminem wants to do. Really? 
Maybe he thinking, uh, you know, I got everybody on my side and I could do this. Yeah, he should just let it go. I mean, this ain't really the angle. Because if Lord Jamar wants to entertain this, you're going to lose the, what you think you have. <laughs> so, I mean, really, he going to lose that. He going to think like they with me. No, they ain't. <laughs> The, a lot of the brothers are divided, but they, they come together very fast when something happens of this nature. You can only keep dipping in this Kool-Aid back and forth every now and then, but you dissing somebody like Lord Jamal, dude, it's like, uh, Eminem, you sold some records. <laughs> but you ain't blessed in the game like Lord Jamal was. You know what I'm saying? from everywhere, from, from all hip-hop heads, you know, he been there producing records the whole night. So, I know you guys just cut him off. A lot of you just forgot about him out the brand new, being those who do remember him. But he been around. So, he earned that spot. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, it's something like that time I got into it with Shan, right? With MC Shan. That should have never happened. You know what I'm saying? I should have never continued to move forward with that. It didn't hurt me in any way, but it hurt me to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's why I stopped myself. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm a fan of Shan. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is somebody who made songs that I loved. I can't be in a beef with him. And he just mad over my opinion between him and KRS1. Because he's an MC, he's going to always feel, I got a chance to beat that guy. But for me, I was so, like, you can't beat Chris. <laughs> you know, once you admit it and he know that you smoked crack, I don't see how you're going to get around that. <laughs> so he was upset at the fact that I was like, man, you ride for Chris hard. I'm like, dude, the Blastmaster, you, you don't have the style to beat him. You could try to be as lyrical as, man, he will clown you. That brother will clown you. He's made for battle rap. You made for sharp point lyrics. And yeah, you got some, some good lines, but you ain't, you can't. He's the master of ceremony. You say rhymes, people don't really hear what you're saying. That means you can't, you're not a master of ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> not better than Chris. Chris, when he speak, everybody listen. Yo, everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you kidding? That's what I'm like, dude, you cannot win that. You're not going to be Blastmaster. And that's just my opinion. He was mad. And we went into this whole big thing and I shouldn't have went out. He got mad and blocked me on Twitter and everything, man. He was mad. Hey, it should have never got there. It should have never went that far. And that's when I said, you know, I'm going to just dial back because that's somebody I was a fan of. You know what I'm saying? So I did like his music, but he just can't be Chris. And that's just the, that's just the gist of it. And that's like here. Eminem should know I shouldn't mess with Lord Jamal. Even if I feel I can out-rap him and do this and that, if I'm talking down to Lord Jamar like that, this guy's not really doing anything. But his podcast, he's living his life. Some things you just got to let go. And you don't really figure that out till you get older. And you would think, M's looking at it to sell records. He's thinking, okay, we can go ahead. He might say something, diss my record or whatever, and come back with something. And then, you know, that's just going to boost my record. Because people know him for talking crap about me. So now I can make another album. It's like, dude, he should have retired after that last one. You know, it's like, what more do you have to say? You have no real content anymore. Your content is done. At the encore, you were done. The pad was over. Your creativity is a three. There's no way you can continue to milk this game unless you're going to be coming up with fluff and huff and puff. 
you know d12 was your creative muse proof swifty mcveigh mr porter canava bizarre stay with what you know anyway I love it, you guys, man, who've been donating to the page. I really appreciate that. Hitting up the stream lab, clicking that link in the description box. I appreciate it. It means a lot. You guys, more than what you would know. And definitely um, hit the cash app. My name, Carcino. You probably will see that on the thing flashing. And I'll put some videos up here that you guys probably want to check out that you probably didn't see or get a notification for. Thank you. I'm out.